I've had to fight for anything I've ever had, earn it by way of scars on my knuckles and hate in my soul. My only family has been the streets. My only long-term home has been juvie. A month ago, I was released from the latter of the two. Now I find myself in one of the places I hate most, but the only place I could legally be released to according to the powers that be. Yet another foster home. My personal purgatory until I turn 18 or get locked up again, whichever comes first. I open the envelope given to me by my caseworker, Mrs. Peterson, at our most recent follow-up meeting. Usually these transfer packages come with the standard stuff, copies of legal forms, release papers, rap sheets, and is usually accompanied by the pamphlets Mrs. Peterson likes to toss in there about how to manage anger without violence. That particular literary treasure from the 80s is my personal favorite. It features a diverse group of smiling children of all ages plastered on the front who look like they not only drank the Kool-Aid but bathed in it twice. Of course those kids don't use violence to deal with their anger. They're heavily medicated, preparing for a suicide trip to Mars with their cult leader. But this package isn't like any of the others I've received. No pamphlets no transfer papers. It's a letter from my caseworker. Dear Kevin, since you're aging out of state care soon, and I know you don't have any plans as to where you're going after you turn 18, I wanted to help in any way I could. I did some digging. I think I found your brother. His name is Samuel Clearwater. His last known address is in Logan's Beach. Good luck, Kevin. I truly wish you all the best. You're a very bright kid. I hope you use some of that intelligence to find your place in this world. Mrs. Peterson My place in the world? I'm pretty sure that's the tagline from one of those infamous pamphlets. Mrs. Peterson has got to be losing it because I don't have a brother. I don't have anyone. I tuck the letter back into the envelope and pull out a picture, which turns out to be a mugshot of a guy who looks a lot like me, but with lighter hair, and a shit ton of tattoos peeking out from underneath the collar of his dress shirt. My heart begins to race. I sit up and look closer at the picture. He's wearing a bow tie and a matching pair of suspenders. His head is cocked to the side, and he's making duck lips at the camera while holding a sign that reads, Logan's Beach Sheriff's Office Inmate, with a date from two years ago listed below it. I look closer and realize that he's holding the sign with only his two middle fingers. I wonder if the sheriff's office ever noticed that. I grinned to myself. A brother. My brother. The concept is baffling. Having grown up with no family to speak of, and no one to rely on but myself and my friend Pike, that is, until Pike and I got separated, and we lost contact when he ended up in a detention center clear across the state. 